Proverbs chapter 28. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Now that's dumb. They run. And there's nothing to run from. And yet that tactic was used by the Almighty God with many couple times with the enemies of Israel. One time the city of Samaria is, is besieged and they're they're eating dove's dung and calves' heads and two leprosy men go out and the enemy's gone because God made them hear a noise and there was no noise. And the wicked flee for no reason at all. They have no hope. They have no courage. They have no stand. They have no ground. But the righteous are bold. That's the first time the word bold shows up as a lion. Now, the Bible also says that the devil is our adversary lion. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And that's not the Christian being like the devil. That's the devil being like Christ and being like Christians. Remember, we have Jesus Christ. The devil has the Antichrist. God has a holy city. The devil has a harlot of a city. God, Jesus Christ has a church. And the devil has filthy church. And we're to be bold. And that's dying out as we go into the light of seeing church age, as we go unto the days of the rapture. For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof. Now, princes is people of authority, people in the government. And the, the, the statement would be most clearly to be the more transgressions you have in the land, the more government employees you have, the more police officers you're going to have, the more correction officers you're going to have, the more judges you're going to have, the more the office workers for the police department, the more 911 dispatchers you got to have, the more office personnel and the catering personnel of the prison, the more the land transgresses, the more you're going to have to have more and more government employees. Whereas if we were to do God right and put the, put the Bible in, back in the school and put Jesus back in the school and put the authority of God and the creator of God back in the schools and preach right and teach right, we wouldn't have the, we wouldn't, not saying we wouldn't have no crime, but we wouldn't have the excessive crime. And if we were to do what God tells us to do, when we have certain crimes against humanity, we're to put them to death. Capital punishment. When we are to get rid of religions that are against God. You know, I read today, Hezekiah, he went in there and destroyed the groves. He went in there and destroyed the high places. He went in and destroyed the altars. He went in there and destroyed the, 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 the religion. And other kings that did right, they killed the false priests. They killed the, the people that worshipped. Jehu went in there and destroyed the house of Baal. We're not going to have a national revival of America when the Constitution of, of America says you can practice whatever religion you want. And I'm not saying I'm not saying a church state religion, but we got to have a, theoc a theocracy where God's ahead. And if God's ahead, you can't have the Muslims, you can't have the Catholic Church, you can't have the Mormons, you can't have the Jehovah Witnesses. And if they're going to be in practice, let them practice in secret. But the Mormons are coming up, Jehovah Witnesses are coming up, the, more, the, the Muslims are coming up, the Catholics are coming up, and the Christians are going in the closet. The sodomites are coming out of the closet, but the Christians are going back into the, they're going into the closet that the sodomites came out of. You're not going to have a revival. You're not going to have a revival of today. I heard that, 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 well, today I heard Biden, Pentecostal, Donald Trump is, is uh, um, uh, 
non-denominational, that ain't going to bring you a righteous nation. Well, you know, one party over the other part. No, you're going to have you're going to have good holiness. You're going to have true Bible believing Christians. And I'm not saying anything with voting. I'm not saying anything with party. You got to have a Bible believer. But by a man of understanding. So there is no understanding with transgression. And there is no understanding in a mismatality or a government. And I'm talking not politics. I'm talking about state government, county government, city and town government. Where they're building upon the transgression, there is a man of understanding. There's no understanding with transgressions and knowledge. The state thereof shall be prolonged. That's an interesting word. He uses state. No church and state, church and state. When we talk about Christ, our standing, if you're saved, born again, you're standing in Christ. That sure sound, you can't change. You can't lose it. God will never deny you. But our state is a different condition. And, and, and how I learned the state and the standing of Christ is standing, you're standing, you don't move. The state. Well, in America, we got 50 states. And you got California. And you got the New England states. And you got the Southern states. And you got Alaska. And state is what are you right now? Are you clean? Are you evil? Are you wicked? Are you doing right? Are you living right? Are you the state is wishy-washy. The standing in Christ is sure. But the state. That could be wishy-washy. That could be good. Now, it could be bad. <laughs> Later. It could be terrible now. It could be good. And a man that has understanding and knowledge outside of his transgression, he can have a good state. And I'm going to take the word state also, too, with the princes is not an individual, but the group of people. If everyone did right in a government form and served God, things would be well. A poor man that oppressive, bothers, hinders, puts down, taxes, overcharges. The poor is like a sweeping rain which leaveth no food. And that's the, the rain comes along, it's just a flood, harsh rain, and it washes the topsoil and the plants away. When a poor man's in business and another poor man comes into business, the poor man in business just soaks that poor man that comes in as a customer. That's also the government, along with verse 2. The government is poor. Do you realize how much our government is in a deficit? How much money we owe? And one of the OEs that we owe is China. I mean, if China, and we, we keep ranking on China, if China ever came up and said, okay, America, pay your dues. Pay your bill. We're in trouble. As much as the as, as the government said, pay your taxes. If you don't pay your taxes, the, 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 the iron teeth of, of the IRS is going to soak you. Man, you realize some of these countries around, around the world, if they came to America and treated us like the IRS did, we'd be sunk. America's poor. America is putting more money out than she's getting in. And she just manipulates and just powderizes her own poor people. America's poor. 
We don't believe America's poor. Look where her vets are. I don't mean vets and men who just serve in the war. I'm talking about any man that served any of the branches of the service, Navy, Army, Marines, Air Force, Coast Guard. And I hope I didn't forget any Air Force. I don't know if I mentioned that. Thank you for your service. But you could do you can do any amount of service, come out with medical discharge one year, two years. You can do your four years. You can do five years, six years, eight years. And you can do all and come out still poor, wretched, and living on the side of a street. Because the government's unable to take care of you. America is, is a poor nation. I mean, we're richer than other nations until the other nations say, okay, pay your dues. We got more money going out than we got money coming in. And then the IRS says, well, can't pay your taxes, can't pay your taxes. We're going to take everything you own. Well, you better hope China never says, pay your bill, pay your bill. We still owe a debt of World War II. We still owe a debt of the Korean and Vietnam Wars. We still owe our military personnel money for the service they've done to us. Verse 4. They that forsake the law praise the wicked. Now, the book of Proverbs is in the law. Psalm is under the law. Psalm is right in the period that he's in. Law. And anybody that forsakes the law, they will praise the wicked. Because the wicked don't the wicked don't do the law. They're just like me. Now, let, let me make a let me make a statement here. Let me make an honest statement and listen to me and don't you dare say I said something else. I am not saved according to the law. I am saved by the testimony and by the merits of Jesus Christ alone. Okay? I got a free will. But when the law says thou shalt not commit adultery, if I want to do right as a Christian, and if I want to hear well done from Jesus Christ, if I want to earn gold, silver, precious stones, crowns, and, and, and inheritance, I better not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Okay, I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ as a Christian. To be at, at a right state in the judgment seat of Christ, I better not steal. Now, it doesn't go far as, you know, I build a battlement around my house, the roof of my house, but it would be wise if people are going to be on my roof to protect them. We're not honoring the Sabbath in the church age. We, the first day of the week. Sunday. So there is a cause in the Old Testament, and there is a cause during during the church, the church age. We should take at least one day off. Have one day with the family. And it's not law, you don't have to do it. I mean, I'll stop at the Chinese restaurant. Uh, I will stop at the grocery store. I will make a stop at a convenience store. I will get gasoline on Sunday. I'm not under the law. And yet there are Christians out there who forsake the commandments and laws that should be right for the Christian life. What's the commandment a Christian can, can violate of the church? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. They don't do it. So they go hang around with other Christians that don't do it. It makes them feel good because they're going to not get reproved by a Christian that does go out. They're not going to. See, if you come hanging out with me and you don't go witnessing, you're going to hear from me. Grab some graspable chops. Pass them out. I mean, I tell people, get some gospel track. If you go to a public bathroom, leave a gospel track. Public bathroom is one of the greatest places you can leave a gospel track. If you get gasoline, leave a gospel track in the pump handle of the, of the gasoline pump. 
Now, a man that violates what Christ has commanded us to do, he's not going to be around me because all that guy does is say his witness. All that guy does is tell you tell people about Jesus. All that guy. I, I want to be around somebody who ain't going to do that. I'm going to be around somebody who's going to talk about football and baseball. I'm going to be around somebody who's going to talk about politics. I'm going to, anybody but Jesus, a Christian, can do that. And so. They that forsake the law praise the wicked. Those that do wrong are going to be with wrongdoers. But such as keep the law contend with them. Who? Those that forsake the law. And I said, somebody comes up to me, a Christian, I'm going to promote going all the world and preach the gospel. I'm not going to say go out in the street and preach gospel like I do or go out and pass out gospel tracts like my daughter does. I'm, your church goes knock on doors? Go go knock on doors. Leave gospel tracts behind. Put them in your bills. Mail them out. Write a letter. Put bumper stickers on your car. But the wicked don't want to hear that. And you can be saved a Christian and be wicked. And you're not going to want to hang around with a Christian that's on fire with the Lord for a while. Because you're afraid that fire is going to jump on you. And you want to be stone cold, dead coal, the black coal that's not having any heat or any warmth at all in someone's life. So they stay away. Evil men. Understand not judgment. Again, if, if, if you've been part of a public ministry, however your public ministry, there are people out there, they'll proclaim innocence, they'll proclaim religion, they'll proclaim science, they'll proclaim ignorance, and they don't realize that they're going to see God one day when the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. They don't understand. They're going to have to give an account of everything they do before God. That is not under the blood. And that also goes for a Christian. You can be evil and be saved. And the problem with, with the churches today of all over the world, they're not preaching to Christians. They're not teaching Christians. Let me tell you something. Do you know your thoughts are sin? That's not being taught. Jesus said, whosoever looketh upon a woman and lusts after his heart is committed adultery with her. Now, there are churches out there, don't go sleep with another woman. But there's churches out there, they don't tell you, don't even think about it. Don't get involved in pornography. Because that's thinking about it, and you, you committed adultery. And there are Christians out there, well, I didn't go to bed. Yes, you did. You sinned against God. There's a great sin out there that is ignorant of the churches is thinking about it. Oh, I wish that guy just died. You're a murderer. One of these days, I'm going to kill my boss. Uh, that's a murderer. Thou shalt not kill. Me? Yes, you Christian. How about where Jesus said, every idle word, men, men, doesn't say saved men, doesn't say lost men. Every idle word shall men give an account thereof that day. You're going to give account for every idle word that you spoke. Is that taught in, in, in churches today? They don't understand judgment is coming. Some don't understand some of their judgments are going to lead to the lake of fire. Some judgments for the Christians, they're not going to get no, no crowns, no rewards, no inheritance, no nothing. But he, oh wait a minute, excuse me, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Now many will not seek. I seek the Lord every day, and I know there's gold, silver, precious stone, crown, and inheritance. Amen. But I also know there's wood, hay, or stubble. I also know that people who I size up, and when, when the Holy Spirit says witness to them, tell them, give them a gospel draft. I know if I don't, 
I'm going to stand guilty at the great white zone judgment, though I won't go to the lake of fire. That person is going to point their fingers at me, and I'm going to be guilty for not telling them. Now, how many Christians are taught that in the churches today? When you don't tell them about Jesus, you're going to stand guilty that the Bible says, it's either Revelation 21 or 22, then, then God wipes away our tears. Our tears are not wiped away to after the great white throne judgment. How's that taught in the, in the churches today? You're going to weep when you see your family cast off in the lake of fire, and you're going to be in horror when you did not tell them on how to be saved. And they point their fingers at you, and you stand guilty. Now, if you warned them, okay, you warned them. Better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness. <clears throat> so a poor man, and he's right. He's doing what God wants him. It'd be better than you'd be rich and fortunate. Then he that's perverse in his ways, though he be rich. In Luke 16, there was a rich man and there was Lazarus. And the rich man went to hell. And the poor beggar that had medical conditions of sores went to Abraham's bosom. Riches and wealth does not get you saved. That man that God said, oh, I'm going to tear everything down. I'm going to rebuild. I'm going to get me storage centers and I'm going to get me, you know, garages. And, and, and God says, thou fool, tonight your soul is required. But Lord, look at all my barns. Yeah, and look what Peter said. Heaven and earth are going to flee away with a fervent heat and all your filth and all your riches and all your junk. <sniffs> Burnt. And you'll stand there naked before God Almighty and you'll have no pockets for your wallet. You won't even have a wallet. Better a poor man that walketh is uprighteous than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. I'm going to say it. Though he be perverse in his ways, though he be rich. Politicians are perverse and they're rich. God said, be, better be poor. That's all I'm going to say. Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son. Again, we're not saved by the law, but... The law says no idols, no images, don't worship them, don't fall down and bow yourself to them. That, that is perfectly pop, popular, pop, proper, as perfectly proper for a Christian to obey after salvation. Now, that's not going to save my soul. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ saved my soul. But after I'm saved, the parts of, you know... It, Getting tattoos, getting my skin completely clean and unadulterated. Hey, that's that's a good Christian living. Many Christians who I know who live right and seek God, they're embarrassed that they got even when they were lost, they got tattooed. They're embarrassed. The proud, majestic, glad to see in church. See, I've had people come up to me. I'm witnessing to them. You see? Yeah, okay, what's that? You see that? Yeah, I see that. What is it? What's well, a cross? Well, I know it's a cross. What's that? See, I'm saved. You're saved because you're tattooed. Yeah, see, I told you. And I'll tell you, know, the law says, thou shalt not print no marks upon your body and cut yourself for the dead. It says that. Doesn't your church tell you about that? Doesn't it say that the, that the bride of Jesus Christ is to be chaste and, ver and, and pure and not color on the lines? We're not saved by the law, but there are some laws that we can obey. And even Paul mentions nine of the commandments. He doesn't mention the Sabbath. It's the law that showed me I was a sinner. I have need of the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. And in my proper relationship with God after, my, after I am saved, 
there are some things in the law I should do. And again, I got that free will. All right. The Bible says, you know, if I, if we confess our sins, well, how do I know I'm a sinner? That schoolmaster still tells me, the scripture still tells me I'm a sinner. All right. Well, Paul told me, where did Paul get it from? He got it from the law. Now, don't take me to say, oh, we're saved by the law. We're not. But the law is still a guidance. The law says, this is what God expects us to be. Though we can't keep the law, but hey, you know, if you do the law as best to your ability, that keeps you pleased with God. Now, I don't bring a lamb. I don't bring a bullock. I don't do that no more. I bring the blood of Jesus Christ. But there's a chapter in, I think it's Leviticus or Deuteronomy, you know, not to have sexual relations with family members. That'd be perfectly good, well, to, to, to be advised. I ought not to see the nakedness of certain people. Are you going to say because you're saved, all right, we just violate the entire law? No. Whosoever keepeth the law is a wise son. Now, this, Solomon's time, it's the law. Obey the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. But he that is a companion of righteous men shameth his father. Troublesome. And we are in a realm in America today of riotous men. Tomorrow is the is the, the election, and they're they're thinking that Tuesday, Wednesday, and the Thursday there's going to be riots on whoever wins and whoever loses. And the Bible says, with these rioting people, it should be a shame to the father of that child that is rioting. And there's a problem in America today. There are children out there, there are children that don't even know who their father is. We live in a generation where the woman opens herself to any and every man to have a child with any man. And a child today, to the shame of the parents, you could put two men in a lineup, and that 50-50, and that, that child would not even know which two of those men are his father. That's a shame. That's the educational system. Free sex. Sex education. That's the public education of sex education. It is supposed to be of the rioting children out there. They're their families are supposed to be upset and made ashamed. And it's a shame that many of those people out there in the right, number one, their parents are probably out there doing it with them. Or number one, A, their parents did it during Woodstock era and during the era of, uh, of um, the Vietnam War. You're right, the children that are rioting today were the children that were rioting during the 60s and 70s. The Woodstock class of the dope heads and the music heads and the free sex heads and the VW feds and the California free loves are the ones that are on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. today. It's the bidden people out there with the riot. No, it's the Trump people. No, it's all the drug head children out there and their grandchildren. And it's a shame that those people out there rioting, their family don't even care. They probably even support them. And your government supports them and you support them with your tax dollars while they get paid welfare to do what they're doing. He that by usury, that's a charge for money, interest, and unjust gain, Increases his substance. So, whether you charge an interest on a loan, and in the law, that was forbidden. 
for a Jew to charge usury to another Jew. And then we have unjust gain. You have made money unjustly. And you have increased your substance. You got more than what you started with. He shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. You'll have no charge over that money. You'll have no charge over that faith. God will give it to somebody else to use it for his glory. You know, the big grocery stores got all the fame and fortune. They have got Bible-believing Christians that they pay, and those Christians take what they get paid, and they give to missionaries in their churches. That came from the guy who greedily got the money. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, again, we're about the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. It's a hindrance to prayer. Again, now we're not under the law. But if a Christian violates coveting, Solomon says, Anybody that doesn't hear the law, turns away from the law, his prayer is an abomination. And the only prayer that's not an abomination of a man that's coveting, which is in the law, and Paul speaks about coveting, Paul calls it lust, Romans chapter 7, is if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When we confess that sin first, and we are sorry for that sin, second. And we avoid that sin, number three. Then the prayer doesn't become an abomination anymore. But if you're in violation of law, and you're in violation of what Jesus commands, you're in violation of what, what the apostles tell us we should do, we should love our brethren and all that, you're in violation of that, your prayer is an abomination. Abomination is just as much as sodomites. It's abomination to be a sodomite. Yes, it is. It's abomination of adultery. Yes, it is. And so are you not listening to the Bible in your prayer. Judah got so terrible in their sins that God told Jeremiah, don't even pray for them. I'm not going to listen. Whosoever causes the righteous to go astray in an evil way. You got a man under the law. You got a man in the church. Eh? They're doing right. A Christian or a non-Christian. Turns that Christian out of the way. A cult. Or... You hamper that man so much, he quits. Or he cools down. He's not on fire anymore. Whether saved or lost, he is not doing right anymore. He shall, the man that caused it, fall himself in his own pit. Be not, God's not, be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Jesus said it'd be better for a millstone to be tied around your neck than offend the one of the little ones. And I've seen, as far as the ministries, as when we used to be down in Ocean Walk, and that was many years ago, up to presently. I guess Maybe if I go back, but far my most of my memory is when we go back to the Ocean Walk Ministry is when we see a parent or parents forbid their children any way, shape, or form coming to Jesus. We see them tell their kids, "No, don't you take that piece of paper from them." We I've seen the parents before take the back of the kid's neck and grr, away from us. You're turning them out of the, the right way to go into an evil way. God's going to take, take you to the back of your neck and force you to do what you don't want to do. And worse, 
because you always get worse in sowing. But the upright shall have good things in possession. Oh, that, oh, look at that. Prosperity. Again, we're in Proverbs. We're in the Old Testament law. Solomon can write what we're, what we're saying. Paul couldn't. Paul died. I, I, I was told he lost, he was beheaded. John the Baptist was beheaded. He, his, his life was in a prison. And John the Baptist wasn't a Christian. Peter, we're told, was hung up, uh, was crucified upside down. Andrew, they say he, he was he was crucified uh, on it like an X. John the uh, John the beloved apostle was, was put into boiling liquid, and then left on the island of Platinum to, to, to live out his life. Paul said, "Just bring me the parchments, and I think a cloak or something like that." That's all he had. You know, the life end of Paul would have been ridiculously. Cruel, according to what we read in the in the law, to show you that the law is totally different from the church age. You know the moment when a Jewish person got saved, he's ostracized from his family. And listen, the, the church had to take an offering for the poor saints in Jerusalem because the saints that became saints under the blood of Jesus Christ were ostracized by the government and ostracized by their family. They needed help. Where's the prosperity for them? They had to get help from the church. So a lot of this prosperity gospel preaching comes out of the law. And Jesus comes along and says, that rich man says, I'm going to build greater and bigger. And God says, no, you're going to hell. That rich man that sat in his wonderful house while the, while the, the lame man with the swords and the poor, that rich man went into hell. The man with the swords went into Abraham's bosom. The rich man came, the young man came to Jesus. What must I do to be saved? Hey, that's it. And he walked away because he had great riches and didn't follow Jesus. Listen, when Jesus came along with the gospels, he turned that prosperity gospel into <laughs> Listen, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes who were rich and all got upset with Jesus because he's hanging around with the sinners and the publicans and the, the poor people. He's hanging out with a woman who has committed adultery at a well carrying a, a pail of water. A blind man uh, up in the tree. A man that, men that were leprous and had to beg for money and had to be outside the gates of the city. He'd go up to them. And he says about the rich man, it would be easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle and the rich man again to hell. Whoa, that's a big change from Proverbs. That's a big change from the law. It's been a change. The rich man is wise as his own conceit. Look at me. I'm rich. I'm great. I'm wonderful. I'm going to say it. I'm sorry. Hopefully this will be the end of it tomorrow. That is the Bible verse for Donald Trump right there. In his pride. And I've had preachers tell pre preachers with S. Yes, Donald Trump is prideful. And you're going to lift him up? Donald Trump is because I'm a businessman. I'm rich. I'm Donald Trump. And you've been divorced three times and you bankrupt your businesses six times. You're a failure as a husband and you're a failure as a businessman. And in the coming of the four years that you've been president, I don't see America great. And you're going to say, well, let's continue whatever it is to make America great. You didn't make it great the first time. 
You're so proud you don't even see the destruction of this country. And so are the Christians that follow him, and I'll get off that. But the poor that has understanding searches him out. Stiley comes along. He ain't got no money. Oh, Donald Trump. I search out Donald Trump, and I find out, gee, he gave all tons of money to a non-denominational non church in Las Vegas. I found out that he's bankrupt six businesses. I found out he's been divorced three times. I found out in many Baptist churches I've been in, they wouldn't even allow Donald Trump to be a member of their church. But they want him as the president of the United States. Uh, the man has never professed Jesus Christ as sin. Well, he said the other day, Jesus, 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 because he was talking to a congregation of people that love Jesus. And God is my boss. Book, chapter, and verse number, please, on what, what he said. And you're so stupid enough to believe that he mentioned Jesus and God to please you to get his vote. You're naive. And you don't even know it. We're rich. We're wonderful. We're great. God says you're miserable and you're naked. You're poor and you're blind. Don't we have a good church? That's why I'm standing outside knocking on the door. What's going on here? I search them out. What they say about Ben and Pentecost, he's just as worse. We had a, a couple of years ago, a few years, four years, we had a we had a Mormon running for office. Hey, I was attacking him just as much. When he was, when we had the Mormon run for office, I said, "What will we do? Have the first lady, the first lady, the first lady, first lady? Or we have the first lady, the second lady, the third lady, the fourth lady? What would we have if we had the Mormon as a president?" Mormons, even though it's illegal, Mormons have multiple wives. So first lady, second lady, third lady. And then I was saying all the doctrines of the mar of the martyr of the Mormon church that goes against the doctrines of the Bible. Any man that runs for president, if he's against the Bible, I'm going to speak up. Now, in my opinion, the closest man we had to that, and I forget which one is. Is one of the uh, is the Bush son or the father? One of them was a practicing Christian. The one that I believe is the, his his wife was the teacher. And I read his book. I read his testimony. I read his testimony from uh, um. Boy, my brain's going. Billy Graham. So I, I search him out, the rich man. I will tell you as it is. And I get attacked. I got attacked today for, you know, going against, going against, going against voting and preaching. That's okay. We'll stand to the judgment seat of Christ. We'll find out who's right and you'll be wrong. I'm supposed to. I'm not I'm not being bold. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Nowhere, and I've done the study, do I see voting. I'll get off it. I already started Christmas today. When righteous men do rejoice, amen. There is great glory. But when the wicked rise. A man is hidden. Now be running from the Antichrist. When the as the as the Antichrist gets closer and closer to that three and a half years before he becomes a great tribulation, the Jews are going to slowly, slowly but realize when it's and at that three and a half years, the abomination of desolation, then they're going they have to hide. But there are wicked men that rise in America and people don't hide. They run to them. 
and they praise him and they give him TV and they give him newspaper and they just it's terrible he that covereth his sins shall not prosper I didn't do it not me my mom made me do it well, I grew up in the ghetto. It wasn't me. I went to a priest in a, in a, in a telephone booth. I paid money to my, my church, so that's covering sins. He that covers his sins. Shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth, there you go, and forsaketh, I confess my sins. I can't stop it. You didn't forsake it, it don't count. You cry all the help you want. You don't forsake it, it don't count. Then, them shall they have mercy. You got to confess and you got to battle it. You got to forsake it. You got to fight it. It may take you a fight for the rest of your life. No, we do not have a license to sin. But we do have a license to sin. And there you go contradicting yourself. No, we have a life. We have a life. We can do whatever we want to do as Christians. Why you not to? We also have a father in heaven that Hebrew says that he'll chastise his children. And there are some Christians, they, they get chastised, they get chastised, they check, they get chastised, and one day they drop the axe, and God says, I'm done with you, you're gone. And you die early. And you die lost in rewards. Whatever you've done does not mount to nothing. Because your sins. You got to confess, and you got to forsake. And that's another thing, too, when you get to these people, you know, we, we walk the altar, oh, I'm so sorry, God, I'm so sorry. And then they just never come back and they never do anything again for the Lord. They confessed. Did they forsake? Was it the heart? Happy is the man that fears always. We had the other day where we were going to church, I think it was. This woman just, just walks out in the middle of the street. If I did not see her and then put the brakes on, she would be in the hospital. I did not expect her to do what she did, and I, I, I caught her out of the corner of my eye. She wouldn't be happy today, laying in the hospital. But the man that steps to the, to the side of the road and looks both ways. I better wait for that car to go by. Okay, now I can go. But he that hardens his heart, Pharaoh, hardened his heart shall fall in the mission. Pharaoh drowned and died. Death. Happy is a man that confesses his sins and forsakes his sins. Harden your heart and, and, and have a hard attitude towards your sin. You're going to have mischief. Pharaoh died because of his sins. 